This is a step-by-step free full-length masterclass where you will confront your shadow and turn it into your divine accomplice. In short, you are very likely missing out on half of your power, friends. Here's what you will gain from mastering this skill of doming your demons. Notice that I said mastering the skill and actually doing it, not listening once and getting all high on ideas. Though if you are just doing your dishes and you need something to listen to, welcome. So the benefits of doming your demons are, one, your sense of self-love will drastically increase. Two, a better mastery over your emotions and a profound sense of understanding yourself. You will have a way more nuanced and honest version of knowing what your true desires are and knowing who you are. Number four, and this is my favorite one, you will become hotter. And to all my people who feign and go, oh, I'm not doing it to look good. I dare you to look at some of your shadows and I dare you to challenge that because laugh all you want. The confidence and magnetism that you will gain from this process is going to be off the charts. So if you're not into that, uh, yes, you are. Just do this process. Just, just do this process, you modest, modest being. Number six benefit, number six benefit of doming your demons is you may experience deeper sleep. I noticed that when I first did this, it felt like I had worked out for like two hours straight and I was like, what is going on? But it was because my nervous system was resetting. So just like any good detox, at first it's going to like take from you and then in the end it's going to pay serious dividends. Number six benefit of doming your demons is you will feel a true full somatic release from doing this. Things will not trigger you the way that they used to. And you may actually find in yourself a better balance of your masculine and feminine sides. Now to all my lumberjack, you know, da 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 That's what I think of when I see all the like super buff masculine guys. I only hear that audio in my head. Da 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 da. Okay, you're not gonna lose your hot lumberjack masculine muscles, but you may find that like you have an appropriate container for your rage and you know how to be softer in ways that benefit you in business, in love. Having balance is a good thing, I promise. And to my girls who like to be super feminine, you're not going to lose that, but you might find that you have like a better ability to set parameters, that you're not a doormat, that you want to like go after your ambition. Whatever that balance is that you need, it's going to automatically reset throughout this process. It's called balance. Say it with me, guys. Balance. So before we start, let's make sure I'm not wasting any of y'all's time. So let's go into a handful of categories of folks who I think will most benefit. Wait for number four. Number four, chef's kiss. One, the black sheep and the social outcasts of society. Number two, the high achieving workaholics who have a hole in their soul. Three, the underachieving lowlifes who have a hole in their soul. And number four, the undisclosed mystery category that I will reveal in like two and a half minutes. All right, so black sheep and social outcasts who feel on the fringe of society's norms and standards. Hi, to those of you who feel isolated or outcast by mainstream society, whether that's due to spiritual beliefs or just feeling like the odd man out, or maybe you really just want more out of life than most people. You know, cue the Beauty and the Beast bell song, the there must be more to this provincial life. Also, a really cool side effect of doming your demons is that you really do befriend yourself in ways you'd never expect, which is honestly one step closer to feeling less alone in this life. I myself am a child of emotional neglect, but I also had five siblings. And that's what led me to find out that I had a hidden subconscious belief that I literally did not exist. So... <laughs> That will absolutely lead you to creating patterns in your life, leaving you feeling like an outcast. All I can say is, if you're a black sheep, you just know it. Like, you don't need me to explain it to you. I really don't have to elaborate. Anyways, we like in this society to mock people who think, oh, no one understands me. And I'd like to counter that argument by saying, maybe that's fucking true. Maybe no one in your life does understand you right now. And maybe you are one of them. But that tiny closet that you're living in, my friend, is so small. Here at Dom Your Demons, that's not where we're going to stay. We're going to use that pain as a launch pad to admit how we feel and then get to the root of it 
release it, figure out what our true desire is, and then attain that thing. The number two category of people who will benefit the most from confronting their shadow is the high achieving workaholics with a hole in their soul. So you're high achieving, but you feel empty all the time, except for when you're making money or you're being affirmed for your accomplishments or maybe things like sex. It's like you get home, the day is done. Maybe even it was like a really good day, but then there's that silence creeping in and this sinking void of nothing. And you try to cover it up with like working more or scrolling or partying or money or sex. Now, let me just say this. If you are a hardworking or ambitious person and you take risks in your life, I ride so hard for you. Like there is such a space for you here. I am in fact finally becoming one of you. <laughs> but you might consider doming your demons if you only feel okay when there's an external validation present. Might wanna look to like how you're trying to impress your parents, I don't know. Honestly, because you're missing out on all of you, dude. I'm here to tell you that you can have all of those awesome things and a sense of fullness just for being you, the truest child self that's inside of you. And I would argue that finding that sort of balance in life is, is the kind of person who is my favorite kind of person in the world. Good examples of people like this are like your Aubrey Marcuses or Robert Edward Grant. If I were to only teach this skill of doming your demons to only high achievers, I think the whole world would change because you guys are leaders. People look to you for guidance. People admire you, you know? And I want you to feel that same fullness and admiration for yourself. But I am about to call you guys out. Courage is not sitting in an ice bath. <laughs> Being brave is looking at all that shit you don't want to see and loving it. Do not, please do not tell me about the bucket of ice you sat in this morning, okay? Tell me if the first girl who broke your heart is still pulling all your strings. So now you only attract women who just follow your orders complacently and you treat them like an employee and they're not your true soulmate because you gave up on that years ago when you were 17. And it's all because you couldn't forgive Ashley. I mean, I know. F you, Ashley. The number three category of people who will really benefit from doming your demons is hello to all my underachievers and low lives who have a hole in your soul. Hello. I definitely used to be you, and I know exactly what it feels like to be a failure and to not know what the fuck you're doing in this life. You wanna know something cool? I turned all my failures into my resume. Basically, my demons are now all my employees. In my personal case, I was dissociating like a lot because on a deep subconscious level, I felt like I didn't have the right to exist. And that's real, like my body believed that. I also did not believe that I had a right to be loved adequately or with closeness, like emotional closeness. I, my body really didn't believe that. I simply couldn't handle being on this planet and I did anything I could to escape. I was basically checking out like whenever possible. The way I pulled myself out of that intense fetal position was only through the power of loving myself. But to all my people with a sneaking suspicion that they are not accessing their greatness, and sometimes like life is a prison and they just don't know what to do with it, welcome. May I suggest to you this very free and full length masterclass that is called Doming Your Demons. Oh yes, and the mysterious number four category to my gym bros who have one lesbian friend. What's up guys, come on down. I tend to get along with you guys really well. So what's up my gym bros with one lesbian friend? All right, so are we ready? Here we go. I am teaching you today what will happen when you confront your shadow and subsequently reprogram your subconscious mind-body complex. This is through the use of observation, energy work, and intelligent inquiry of your subconscious mind. I am going to teach you how to do this for yourself. When this is done correctly, it will lead to a series of full body releases and the opportunity to reprogram all of your shitty beliefs that are running in your subconscious program. Welcome to the full step-by-step -step masterclass of doming your demons. So if you appreciate being put on some valuable free game, because honestly, I would not get on a microphone and look into a camera and tell you anything unless I actually believed what I was saying. <laughs> I hate public speaking. Like, I can't believe I'm doing this shit right now. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, so if you appreciate what I'm teaching, please subscribe, like, comment, and let's get on with the show. I literally know that this process that I'm offering to you will change the world in some way. It will undoubtedly change you when done correctly. And you have to be brave enough to feel. Just a warning, if you are very, very, very wholesome and you can't handle the next spicy, saucy analogy that I'm about to present, you should leave now. Alternately, if you are not a mature adult and you cannot respectfully, maturely handle the sex-related analogy that I'm about to present, please go somewhere else and never watch my videos again and no homophobic comments. Thank you. No, but honestly, none of this content is intended for the overly pure or judgmentally righteous or people clinging to their facade of purity and perfection as a way to dodge the case. Neither is it intended for people who don't know what emotional maturity is. You're gonna have to take a few steps back. So this is for my big boys. This is for my daddies. You, my friend, should stay if you know that you're a bad motherfucker or you just want to be and you got respect for yourself and others, not just people who look like you. And you're looking to expand that power exponentially. I want to start a movement with you guys. So if you're not afraid to get your hands dirty, let's begin. Doming your demons. What is it? All right, so doming your demons. Doming is a term that's used in BDSM and kink communities, and it's referring to the person who holds the upper hand in a sensual power dynamic. They are responsible for playing out what's known as a scene. So a scene has a start and a finish, and it's in a designated place, and it's agreed upon with consensual parameters. So within that scene, you suspend your disbelief and you settle into the dynamic that's agreed upon by both parties. Basically, one person has dominance and the other person submits. <laughs> With regards to the term doming your demons, doming is only a metaphor. So there's no sexy stuff going on in this process, but it was the best analogy to fit what this shadow work is. You know, it's like, it's kind of like an extreme form of shadow work. Also, it's sexy branding and you will never take away my ability to brand things in a sexy way. Ever. All right, but here's why it's the best analogy. Doming your demons means gaining a loving dominion over your shadow. The role of a dom is one you should never, ever take lightly. And it's a role that should be done with a lot of reverence and responsibility. In this power dynamic, your sub is fully giving their trust over to you. You are not there to violently scare them into submission. You are there to skillfully and compassionately guide them into submission. And I think that's so daddy. Sometimes a sub does just wanna be dominated completely like all the way, they just release their arms and they, they give all their power away to you. But sometimes they like to give you a little bit of a run for your money, if you will. And they like to test you to see if you really are in charge consensually. Now these people are called bratty subs. Say it with me, everybody. Bratty, bratty subs. subs, okay? Now, bratty subs are still consensually interested in this power dynamic of like a dominant and a subordinate, but they just don't know yet if you can handle them. Uh, and in this analogy, because this is just an analogy, those bratty little subs are your demons, okay? And you, in this situation, are the dom. Yes, even to my real life subs, okay? So when I say your inner demons, this is what I'm specifically referring to. I specifically mean your own fears, traumas, unwanted behaviors, and anything that pulls you out of the present moment due to discomfort that you have to try to wrestle down or push through. Now these unconscious behaviors and memories and impulses and traumas should not be the ones running the show, friends. But at times, they sure as hell try to dom you. That's because your demons are bratty little subs who are just begging for your loving authority. So here's how you can determine if your demons are actually doming you. Number one. You are at the beck and call of everyone else's behavior or opinion. If you cannot control your reactions to how other people respond to you, then you are not the daddy. You are the bratty little sub, my friend. Number two way to see if your inner demons are actually the daddy. You have micro addictions. These are things like overworking, over scrolling, over swiping, 
overeating. Uh, and the final way to tell if your demons are running the show is if you feel trapped by silence. Yeah, just let that sink in. Because you know if it's true or not. If you are totally fucked without a podcast playing or maybe even this video uh, i hate to say it because i love youtube but if you need a video playing at all times there is a subconscious program that is taking your energy where you could be harnessing it in like a really centered still powerful way and i want to help give you access to that because that was Whew, that was a big challenge of mine. Here's what this process is not. Doming your demons is not easy, but it is relatively achievable. It is not punishing yourself for your shortcomings. It is the most loving form of brutal emotional honesty that I have ever experienced in my life. Listen closely. Doming your demons is not blaming others for your problems, but you will confront the wrong that has been done to you. You just have to promise me that while you're in the middle of this process, okay, you're not going to call up your dad and bitch him out, okay? It is not It is not unaliving your shadow in a standoff. It is turning your most despicable aspects of you into your divine accomplice, all right? So, okay, I told you about the metaphor and what it means. Now we can finally get into what this process is and how you can apply these steps. Dumbing your demons. Da, 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 da. Is that like the, that's like the official intro into it. Yeah, I like that's good. Okay, guys, this is a combination of utilizing four things. One, brutal emotional honesty and imaginative inquiry to actually get down to the root of what your body believes. Two, compassionate, loving observation done with presence and a sense of authority. Three, releasing the stuck energy from your subconscious mind-body complex and experiencing somatic relief. Four, uncovering the root of your true desire and truly reprogramming your beliefs. But you might say right now, Midas, that is my name if you forgot, it's Midas MSL, please subscribe. I already know that I'm fucked up. I already know exactly what my shadow is. Like, I already know what my problems are, okay? It's not like you're gonna show me anything new. And to you I say, yeah, but how's your life? Okay, is it good? Click off this video. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Why are you watching this? Because I knew what my trauma was, but I didn't know in my own experience that I could actually take the dragon of my discomfort and ride it straight towards my goals and desires, okay? It's like using it as gas, using your shadow as gas or fuel to get you there ethically. I also didn't know that intellectualizing my bullshit did literally nothing for me except make me aware that I was living in a cage of my own making with no way out. This is about confronting what the body actually believes. And then you bring it into harmony with your waking life experience. And now here we are doming our demons. So, so here's the only ways that you're going to do this correctly. Number one you are going to listen to this entire masterclass and you're going to take notes. Even if it's on the second listen, on the second listen, you are going to take notes. Two, and I'm not fucking around, okay? You are going to take an entire month and devote yourself to this brutal emotional boot camp. Number three, you are going to be fully open to the idea that you might not be the same person on the other side of this. Number four, you are going to buy a journal specifically for this process alone and take anywhere from 20 minutes up to an hour to document your progress. And you're going to do it any time that you have the free space to document a trigger or an unwanted behavior or an uncomfortable feeling. Number five, you are going to make a promise to me and to yourself that if you ever get too far out in this process and you feel like you're drowning or you feel like you can't do this objectively and you start buying into the trauma and the sadness, that you are going to take a pause, you're going to pull back and you're gonna get a good therapist who can help you and hold your hand through this process. Like if you start getting convinced that your pain is the only truth and there's no way out, I will consider it a W and not an L if you seek help from a professional and let them walk you back into relative wellness before you continue. I want you to be tough, but I don't want you to be that tough. Here's a very real statement of liability from me. This is not medical advice. Any action that you take as a result from hearing this process is your decision. You assume the full 
fullest responsibility for your actions and you agree that no one but yourself is liable for any possible damages that can occur. I view you as powerful. I view you as sovereign. And to say anything less is a disgrace in my eyes. Otherwise, you better have a guardian monitoring every single video you watch ever. With all that said, if you do want an extra hand in this process, I offer one-on-one, -on -one, four-week-long guidance sessions to be a mentor and a friend and a grounding presence while you're getting through it. Because if you're not used to confronting your emotions, it is very scary. I'm looking at you, Jim bros. And some of these techniques are nuanced and advanced, and I am not giving you every single technique because I just can't do that in an hour. You do not have to do it alone, and nothing you've been through could ever scare me. All of your sessions are confidential, and we can turn you into a master of your shadow. And now for my first commercial ever. This masterclass is brought to you by the official t-shirt of Dom Your Demons. Are you ready to Dom Your Demons? Not until you look sexy enough to do it. Here at Dom Your Demons, we don't just get hotter on the inside. We also get hotter on the outside because we're still not beneath being shallow. The Dom Your Demons t-shirt is a t-shirt with the words Dom and also your and also demons. Get it in large because I guarantee your girlfriend is gonna wear it to bed. I bought the DYD t-shirt and look at me now. I'm a goddamn billionaire. Visit our website at theprocessbymidas.com slash merch. Write that down because by the time I post this video, the link isn't going to link. Theprocessbymidas.com slash merch. I was forming around open town, all I see. You know that I can you. All right, boys and girls and gays and theys, it's time to dive into the process of doming your demons is the front to back process written in as much detail and clear concise instruction as I can possibly give you again if you're interested in my one-on-one -on -one sessions I will be able to go into more depth than what an hour can bring all right so I strongly encourage you to listen to this next portion a few times once just to absorb once to take notes and wants to revisit while you're in the thick of it because you do need to do this accurately. I do not want you doing this inaccurately. So you're gonna go through four phases. Phase one is called pause, name, feel, and it's also known as the observation deck. Phase two is what I like to call energy work for beginners or the entrance to the cave. Phase three is called hit rock bottom and discover the truth. And that's where shit gets real. And finally, phase four is full somatic release or the crowning of the divine accomplice. So the first phase is how I want you to begin this process. And you should be able to take the information from this video and use it in your everyday life starting now. It's less involved than the other two phases, but this is the one that you're gonna be utilizing the most. Now, and my hope is maybe for the rest of your entire life. The reason that you'll probably use this one the most is because it's the easiest and it's something that you can do secretly in public or like in a restroom. It doesn't require 30 minutes to an hour of introspection. And at times, strangely, this phase is the most profound. This phase is called pause, name, and feel. This is where you're on the observation deck. You're on the surface, you're looking out over the water and you're just watching how the waves move. So, the best time to utilize this process is whenever an uncomfortable feeling has just come up, whether it's because of something someone said or you're reaching for a bad habit, like you're going to Instagram, but you don't really want to go to Instagram or, and this is my favorite one, you have no idea why you feel uncomfortable. And then all of a sudden, just out of the blue, you start feeling off and you can't tell why. You'll see why it's my favorite in a second. So the second that you become aware of that discomfort, I want you to pause, just pause, okay? I want you to employ this halting of energy more skillfully and more attentively, more thoughtfully and intricately than you ever have before. And you can pause in a moment of difficulty. That is a masterful wizard-like capability. And in a sense, it's like slowing down time. Have you ever had somebody like throw some insult at you and then like three hours later you're in the shower and you come up with like a really good diss for them? It's because you actually like finally paused. <laughs> 
Uh, while I don't suggest this process as a way to come up with like better equipped disses for your adversaries. So this uncomfortable thing has just come up, right? I want you without words to physically and objectively experience the discomfort. This sucks the poison out of the moment very effectively because you're just an observer and you're Oh, you're almost manipulating time. It's so fascinating. You're just pausing and watching like a scientist. Even if you're in a discussion with somebody and something comes up while they're talking, I just want you internally to go about the conversation, but just pause. Like, if you can, don't let them see it, but just hmm. take a second and absorb it. Now we take you to the naming phase. So use this format. You're going to say... I feel blank because blank happened. Do your best to just give it a descriptive and in the because section, just write your best guess because there'll be a drop of truth in it no matter what. It doesn't have to be the full reality. It just has to be the closest to like, I feel this because this and trust that that answer has validity within it. And if you don't know why, name that. I feel anxious because fuck, I don't know why. Now remember, you're still in pause mode. The last step in phase one is simply feel. So while you're still paused, you just named it according to that formula, you are going to locate one area of your body that feels tense in relationship to this experience. Now that might sound simple, but sometimes it's quite nuanced. So if the example were, I just remembered a pet who died and I'm sad, I would pause. And I would say, I feel very sad because I just remembered Charlie, my dog, died and I miss him. And I feel that in my chest. Say this, say this with as much objective clarity as you can. Say it like you're watching yourself have the feeling. So you're like, just, you're just, you're an inch behind yourself watching yourself have the feeling. And you may notice that it pops up in a strange part of your body that feels totally unrelated but let that be just as valid. A good example of this is I found out once that I was holding trauma in my face because I was always bracing for insults in social situations due to childhood bullying. I was like, why is my face tensing up when I walk into a room of people who I don't like, who I'm not comfortable with? And my face had a good reason. It was holding on to this crazy shit from my past. And it was like, oh, like, you know, it made it made sense why my face would do that. But I never would have logically have put those two things together. You may also conversely find out that you're feeling discomfort because of something totally different from what you expected. Sometimes this phase one process is like it brings so much clarity that you don't need to go further than that. It would change the world if we just did this one thing. I'm not messing around with you. I mean that in a literal sense. I truly feel in my heart that if the entire world just did this one phase correctly, we'd end like literally 10% of the wars we see. One more note on this. As you do this, you're going to develop something that's called somatic awareness. Now, guys, if you're listening to this, listen, listen, girls are going to think this is so hot. If you start talking about your somatic awareness, like your fucking pussy train is about to wing. So somatic awareness is defined as the ability to perceive and understand sensations, feelings, and movements within one's own body. This awareness can encompass both physical sensations and emotional experiences that manifest in the body. They usually point to traumas, memories, or disturbances in the body, and they also can point to when one is in a state of emotional wellness. Once you develop this skill of somatic awareness, which is just locating where a feeling is in your body, really, you have the ability to experience somatic release. So somatic release is the release of stored traumatic energy from your fascia and nervous system, and it will change your life. To my overachievers, if you think you're productive now, wait until you have a somatic release. This is the business hack of the century. But because of the stigma of it being tied to emotions, something that everyone overlooks, I'm going to have you practice this pause name feel phase for a week. You're just going to become acquainted with it because then once you get to phase two, that energy work that we're going to implement is going to, it's going to be a lot easier. But keep listening so that you can absorb this information and revisit phase two when you feel ready to do so. All right, so phase two is where we're going to start to get into some wizardry. Phase two 
is the entrance to the cave. In this phase, you're going to learn how to do two things. One, you're gonna learn how to do energy work on yourself. And two, you're going to utilize intelligent questions as a way to access the subconscious mind. So you'll continue to use phase one of pause, name, feel forever. But now in this phase, it becomes more nuanced. So let's do an exercise. Without thinking, only feeling, okay? I want you to draw all of your sensation into the tip of your right index finger. Take an inhale with me. Keep going. You can, to the best of your imagination, only feel the heightened sensation in the top of your right index finger. Inhale slow with me and feel that sensation increase. Okay, very good. All right, we're going to do it again, but this time we're conducting energy to move at will in your body directed by your own forces up into that same part, okay? We're doing it again and suspend all of your disbelief this time. Take a deep breath in. So feel all of the energy getting hoovered out of your legs, sucking from your arms, from your feet, from your stomach. It's all going into your right index finger at the tip. Now I want you to hold that point of energy and I want you to magnify it. Feel it getting bigger and brighter. And anytime you feel your energy, leave your hand, suck it right back up into the tip. Okay, now release it and feel all of this energy return back into your body. That is your first lesson in magic. We're gonna do one more exercise and this is called the scan. So as we breathe, we're gonna do an inhale and we're going to feel the scan go from the top of our body down to our feet and back up into our heart. So ready? Down to the feet. Now as you exhale, the energy travels from your feet, up your stomach, and it rests in your heart. All right, now this time we're going to apply that energy work to when we have a feeling. So I want you to think about your favorite flavor of pie. Now, as you think about it, I know it sounds weird, but you just thought about your favorite flavor. Mine came up as apple, and I actually felt that sensation of apple in my lower stomach area. So I'm just gonna breathe into that apple pie is my favorite flavor of pie. And it's radiating from this lower center in my body. Now, how we're going to use that in application with doming your demons is when something difficult comes up, we are gonna direct all of our energy into the somatic place that we're feeling it. And that attention is going to shift it for us. So. It's going to do the work for us, which is so cool. Basically in this process, you're energetically setting yourself up for success and your body, your subconscious mind is smart. It is just begging for you to cooperate with it. It is just waiting for you to give it the excuse to release. The truth is, is that the reason we think it's so hard is because we just never were taught in society how to do this. And that's not our fault. It's not your fault. It's not mine, but... We know better now, so we can do better. Practice this exercise often and try to incorporate it in moments of discomfort. And then as we go into the next phases, we're gonna see how it applies. All right, so that was the first step in phase two known as the entrance to the cave. Here's step two. Step two is utilizing intelligent questions as a way to access the subconscious mind. Now this step completely changed my relationship with myself. For anyone who's accustomed to loneliness or seeking out validation outside of yourself, this will change your life. This step will not feel logical, but our addiction to needing to be right is starving us of the ability to know the part of us that is not logical. If there's one thing I can impart upon you guys, it's that the logical mind has also caused problems for us in our current society. Like if we actually addressed the parts of us that don't make sense to us, we, I feel like we would be a much braver 
species. Like, it's because we're avoiding things that we don't understand that is causing us problems. And it's because we're not employing, like, a right-brained, loving approach that I think is holding us back in society from progressing. One thing that you need to know about the subconscious mind is that it does not conform to what society's current standards are. It could give a shit less. That's your logical mind. And at best, it's only half of what's happening inside of you. Your subconscious mind thinks all sorts of shit that you would prefer it not to. And guys, you really need to stop judging that very true aspect of you. Because once you actually start getting curious and have compassion for your disempowering subconscious beliefs, you can change its mind. And I promise you, you can. You don't have to stay stuck running these subconscious programs, you guys, but you have to be very persistent and you do have to be very emotionally brave and willing to be illogical. And this is how you do it. So here's the format of intelligent inquiry that you're going to use the next time an uncomfortable experience arises. First, you identify how you feel. Now, I want you to ask yourself, why? Why are you uncomfortable? Why are you sad for no reason? Why are you angry? And I want you to answer honestly. This is what the body believes. So you get your answer and you identify the part of the body and its response. You might even find when you're given the space to answer honestly that you feel expansive and open all of a sudden because like, your subconscious mind is like, thanks, dude. I've been, I just have been wanting to say that for so long and you never let me say it. But you're not going to stop there. You're going to keep pushing this process further and further down the road until eventually you're going to get to the root cause. But for now, don't worry about getting to the root. I just want you to follow what's known as the trail of whys. So you're going to say, God, I feel really uncomfortable about that thing that person said to me. Why? Because I hate when people say shit like that to me. Why? Because it reminds me of when my siblings used to bully me. And here's the kicker. As you keep kicking it down the road, that's when your intelligent inquiry is going to have to really become tailor-made for you. So what I mean by that is, okay, so what was my example? My example was, it reminds me of when my siblings used to bully me. Now you're going to say, well, why does it bother you that your siblings used to bully me? And you're going to just pause and you're going to let your body, not your logical mind, answer this. You're going to say, because it was the most disempowering thing about my childhood. They always made me feel so small. And as you're doing this, you're observing it like a scientist. But as you're observing it, you're also saying, God, that was so disempowering. Where do I feel that? Oh, I feel it in this area, which is like known in the chakras as the solar plexus. Oh, I feel it in my solar plexus, which is my seat of power. Oh, okay. So oh, I feel it in the top of my gut. And give it a moment. Just let it breathe. Let that part of your body breathe. Give it the attention that it's been begging for this whole time. You know, self-love doesn't have to be corny. But if you ever get stumped on what question to ask, why is a great default? And just stick with it. If you don't get an answer at first, why? And just breathe it through. It will answer you eventually. You just got to show it that you're persistent. Really what I want you to do in this process is just get curious. This takes a very emotionally mature person to just observe the answers compassionately and not do anything else. So take this time when you're in this process of observing and intelligent inquiry to get to know yourself. Like, you're so awesome. You, like, there's so much about you that you haven't discovered yet, which leads us to phase three. So by now you've spent maybe two weeks on phase one and phase two identifying in the body where things are, knowing very thoroughly how to pause, name, and feel, and observe like a scientist. Your journal is getting full. You're like starting to realize a lot of things. Maybe you've had releases on your own without this next phase. Phase three is the most brutal of all the phases. I'll be real. This one, honestly, don't do this one unless you're ready because this is when the subconscious mind is going to bite. If you haven't yet discovered objective detachment or like really mastered that skill, the subconscious mind or Tim, as I like to call him, <laughs> will ruin you. Okay, it's like when we get down to the root, the root is going to put up a fight with you and it's going to give you the best fight it has. 
it's doing this because it knows you're close. It like knows you're on the brink. And um, you could say that this phase is like triggering a bunch of tiny ego deaths. Think of it like if chat GBT knew how to make the world's most on point, personalized, messed up diss, and it knew exactly how to get under your skin. Also at this point, you have been practicing the energy work portion, right? You've been practicing the consolidating your energy up into your heart or up into your finger or up into your face, right? You've been doing that part? Okay, cool. If you forgot that part, I'll make a note of where it is and I'm gonna timestamp it in here and call it energy work basics. So practice that and all the other steps, have a pretty good idea of how to ask yourself like clever questions to trigger the subconscious mind. And now my friends, we are going deeper into the cave. So you've been asking your subconscious mind the good hard hitting questions, but now I want you to start asking with the intention of finding the root cause of your discomfort. And once you get there, you're going to pull the root out in a process known as somatic release. Some things may happen in this phase that you need to be mindful of. Like the saying goes, you need to spend money to make money. So this part will take some of your physical energy because your body is literally rebooting itself. But what it takes from you now, it will pay back in dividends in the future. So consider this part like the detox part of your face. Detoxes suck, but when your skin's all clean and you have more energy, you're really happy that you did so. Especially in the most brutal part of this phase, I would say that right now is a very appropriate time to tell you that I do one-on-one -on -one sessions in the art of doming your demons. I will be able to get more in depth than what we're teaching here and I do them in a set of four. This is because your subconscious mind needs time to adjust and open up. And I cap it at four most of the time because I want you to learn how to fish. Like I wanna teach, I wanna put you out in the open and maybe you can even start teaching this to other people. I wanna teach you how to fish, not give you the fishes if you catch my drift. So just visit theprocessbymidas.com slash demons, book a session with me or book four for a discounted rate and I've got you. On to phase three. So in phase three, like I said, we're getting to the root of what's really going on. I know I'm a broken record, a very sexy, charismatic, cute, broken record, but you need to treat this like a scientist. There's this scene in the movie Scream that I always think about. <laughs> I used to think about this with, um, with old ex-girlfriends because there was always a part in the breakup where they would come back and they would scare me. <laughs> so spoiler alert, in the end of the movie Scream, the killers are revealed and you think that they're dead but then this guy to the side is like i think seth rogan says it i don't know he says wait there's always a final part in the movie where the killer comes up for his last scare and then the guy goes Rah! that's phase three this my friends is the big guns this is where your shadow is gonna throw all of its artillery at your ass you're following this trail of whys until it really says what it means down to why you ever felt triggered in the first place. And that will feel brutal at first. And then you're gonna see all of a sudden, this demon is just a defeated and sad part of you that just needs a friend. Usually it's a kid. And that thing in you that you wanted to strangle five minutes ago, all of a sudden you're gonna wanna throw your arms around it and buy it a soda and like hug it and help it out play catch it's like it's just doing its best man it's it's living out here just like you and i are so when you hit that root where it was stuck it's going to release all of this energy and that's because you're going to be applying all of that somatic energy work where you were asking questions and you were feeling it it's going to release on its own for you you got to trust the wisdom of your body to know what it knows how to do once you once you hit the right buttons so you're pulling all of this good energy into that place where there's discomfort while you're asking questions. Okay guys, so now we see that this big scary thing with horns was just some part of us that needed company or needed to be heard and loved and that's gonna look different for everyone. And I just wanna say, if you've listened this far, like holy shit, you are a warrior. In my eyes, you are the top spiritual 1% of humans. And I applaud your bravery for even like questioning this process. And I applaud you for even listening to this without doing anything about it. Like I really appreciate you. If you are just listening like as light entertainment, 
Try phase one. Try pause, name, feel, and I will be happy with you forever. All right, so that was phase three. Let's get into phase four, which is the most rewarding phase of all of this, I think. That's really where we start to truly reap the benefits of the art of doming your demons. Phase four is called the naming of the divine accomplice. So if you've gotten this far, you've already felt your demon or your somatic block release, and you've cathartically felt your feelings, you've identified the cause and the root, and you're well on your way to being in charge of your triggers, behaviors, and discomfort. You have now evolved into a place of wisdom, and now is the very best part because you get to choose what the new desire is, and you get to reprogram your subconscious mind. So the floor is clean, my friend. The podium is yours. Now is the time to tell you that the coast is clear. I want this next step to happen in succession, like immediate succession to the release. You don't want to do this like two hours after it happened or three hours. You want this to happen very quickly afterwards because your subconscious mind is still going to be like in that suspended open state. And that's like really when the reprogramming can happen. So you're going to travel down to where that expansion and that release happened for you. You're going to identify where that is. Let's say it's in your heart, okay? Your heart is open. I want you to smile into that space. I want you to re-emphasize the expansive feeling that you're feeling from that place, okay? Think of something that makes you really happy. Restate to yourself that you are safe. And now... Whatever belief, that negative belief or that negative memory that you had there, you are going to replace it now with a new desire, with a new statement, with a new affirmation, and you are going to say it as boldly into the universe as you possibly can. Now, this is going to be personal to you. I cannot make up this new affirmation, this new reprogrammed belief for you. It's going to have to come from your heart you know, from your gut, from your, it's going to have to come from your being. But here are some examples of reprogrammed subconscious beliefs that I now have from doing Dom Your Demons. So here are the examples. I desire to be so deeply valuable and loved and seen as worthwhile and very special. I desire to be potent I truly am an important piece in the puzzle of consciousness. I was meant for something truly profound in this life. I hereby choose my biggest, brightest, most powerful life and those who encourage me and desire healthy closeness. This, my friends, is manifestation on steroids. Because if you had a block previously, that block is gone. The universe has no choice but to shift things in your favor. And now you've consciously named the desire. Like you're becoming a master of your reality. Because I've never believed my words so strongly than after doing this process and feeling the release. That concludes this full-length masterclass on the art of doming your demons. I believe in you. I'm always a session away if you need me or you need more perspective. Hit subscribe, maybe drop a comment, and please... Be good to yourself, be good to each other, and stay freaky, my friends. I'm out. Holy shit, you're still here? Well, while you're still here, silly, um, look at this tote bag. Is this not the sexiest thing you've ever seen to hold groceries? Go to the process by Midas.com slash merch to buy it. I'm out.